on uh, ready just switch just the switch the presentation mode uh, go on top display settings and switch it the right on one display settings display settings yeah. yes switch it yeah the first one yeah perfect now carry on okay so I am Riddhi. Uh, I am architect, project manager. I will be moderating uh, this webinar today. So thank you all for participating in this webinar. So agenda of the day's webinar is we will be starting with introduction to Win Zero Capricorn technologies, and then we will be seeing the why, what, and hows of lean construction. Then how digitalization is impacting lean in AEC industry. And at the end of this webinar, we will be taking Q&A. So uh, between the webinar, if you have any questions for the speakers, please put it in the Q&A box. Okay. So for today's webinar, our esteemed speakers are Dr. R. Venkateshan Professor uh, at Nikmar, Hyderabad. So... He has been associated with CPWD in numerous capacity for a period of 27 years, and he was serving as an executive engineer. So he took a voluntary retirement from there, and later he has headed the Management De Development Center of Consolidated Construction Consortium Limited for three years. So he has been uh, having a multidisciplinary expertise range in the areas of administration, tendering, contracting, procurement, design, maintenance, lean construction, and many more. So then he has moved to academic sector as well to contribute his learning to enrich the student community, as well as work in further research pursuit. He has completed his PhD in construction management in year 2010 and has uh, pursued his MBA in specialization in human resource and system management and did his bachelor's in civil engineering. The another speaker for today is Mr. Shitanshu Jain, who is head of digital construction department, Capricot Technologies. With his experience in global construction project management processes and leading digital technologies, he is assisting Indian construction industry stakeholders, owners, developers, government organization, contractor and manufacturer to identify their key challenges and help them in implementing enterprise level digital solution for design, planning, construction, and facility management. He has pursued his master's in civil construction management and his undergraduate in civil engineering. So I will hand over to you, Mr. Shitan Shujan. Thank you so much, Redi. So in interest of time, we'll give our introduction short. I have, I'm so honored to have Dr. RV on the call today to share his experiences. So just a brief about who we are as Capricot, and now we are known as WinZero. So as WinZero, we are a global uh, behemoth in terms of AC technology created with a simple yet complex uh, target of achieving sustainability in the global construction industry through technology. So uh, as of now, we are present in India uh, as Capricot. And apart from that, we have presence from similar companies like Capricot based out of Australia, US and UK. So now we essentially cover all the time zones across the world in helping our customers be more sustainability sensitive. Uh, next slide, please, Vedi. So, uh, so just to bring more uh, focus to this discussion, in India, we are known, were known as Capricot. So, uh, and before that as Cat Studio and Mark. So we are one of the India's leading digital design and construction management technology solution providers focusing on the AEC industry. And our vision is how do we help our customers achieve their goals? We have been there for more than 30 years and have as of now 20,000 plus customers present physically across uh, Delhi, Bangalore, Mumbai and Hyderabad. But with, uh, with, with digital now into place, we are serving in fact globally anywhere in the world our customers. And we are highly technical focused so we have 250 plus tech savvy team who are helping our AC customers day in, day out. And across India, we have 40 plus BIM experts helping not on, only on the uh, delivery side of it, but how to implement and uh, execute projects on BIM across the multiple domains that could be for buildings, infrastructure, water, road, highways, etc. You name it, 
and we have a capacity to help you deliver your projects on that. So, uh, Riddhi, next slide, please. So, uh, with this, uh, Riddhi would like to take a short audience poll about who all, uh, what's the background and what, so based, uh, what is your uh, knowledge about the industry today? And uh, with that, then we'll kickstart the webinar. <clears throat> Riddhi, over to you. So you have to choose uh, among the options. What is your professional background? This will help us know our audience and help us okay. taking the webinar in the direction. Okay, so it's open for 20 seconds. So I'm ending the poll here. So we have 60% uh, of project managers and 20% uh, architects and rest are others. Moving to the next poll. So do you think that digital construction supports lean construction? Okay, so 80% of our audience says that it supports. Thank you everyone for the poll. Yes, now I would like to uh, present uh, Dr. R. Venkateshan to speak on the topic boosting productivity in construction with digital and lean. Over to you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Um, the topics what we are going to discuss something about uh, what is productivity and what is lean construction, why we need lean construction, how can we achieve lean construction. And uh, with a case study, I want to show what, we, what are the benefits we will be getting out of it and that. At the end, we will be going to see that uh, digitization and uh, how it will be helping in lean construction also. Uh, to start with that, uh, productivity, it is the amount of output per unit of input. It, it may be labor, it may be equipment or capital. The formula is output by input. For labor productivity, it may be the value of goods and services produced or work completed divided by the input in man hour. So by that we can see uh, with uh, engaging so many people, how much we are getting the output. So further, if you will see, the problem <clears throat> yeah it need to be moved from your end next slide please what we are seeing the problem with the construction productivity so if you will compare with uh, all other industry uh, with the whole economy you can see the uh, red line that is our construction industry we can see all manufacturing and other uh, service industry, production industry and all. So in that we can, the production, uh, the construction industry you are seeing the line is going down. So we are always uh, at the lower uh, end in the, compared to many other industry. So next slide, please. So what are the issues uh, we are facing is, uh, one is uh, our things are very much dynamic. It is not like production. People, various people are connected, like client, consultant, main contractor, subcontractor, vendors, who will be going on changing, architectural consultant, structural consultant, and that. So there are many people, they are integrated, but uh, they are not uh, uh, having properly connected and that. So what is happening at the site? We are having a lot of uh, communication problem. There, there is no proper communication. Majority of the time we are having the inadequate communication. 
and also we are having a weak short term plans that is uh, we are not having a very strong one because of the dynamism we can even we plan also that is continuously getting changed so one should be adapted to that dynamism of uh, that uh, site situation and also the majority of the time what we are seeing is there is a lack of realistic site information uh, most of the time the planning people sitting at the headquarters they are preparing it they are not in a position to get the site information and um, the site people could not uh, take participation with the uh, people sitting in the headquarters while making some decisions and that so majority of the time we are lacking capturing and transferring of knowledge so every project even though a repetitive project is coming a new group of people are coming that time this uh, transfer of knowledge is not happening these are the some of the issues uh, in construction next slide please if the project statistics if you will see with reference to time and the cost we are seeing 70% of the projects are uh, delayed and we are delivering it late even 20% are delivered only delivered on time whereas cost side if you will see we are seeing hardly 14% uh, on tender price or sometimes 13% under tender price but 73% we are seeing it is going above the tender price so what we are seeing is we are having uh, almost uh, 70% plus on time overrun as well as cost overrun so why these things are happening because people are not in a position to make a proper um, uh, whatever the um, planning they are doing they are not doing it properly the people are disintegrated they are not getting connected so there are many problems are there next slide please one side uh, the time overrun cost overrun problem the other side if you will see the wastages in the manufacturing industry what we are seeing when there is a value added things are 62% we are seeing 12% as a support activity whereas waste is nearly 26% when it come to construction industry for every value creation of 5 to 10% we are having support activity of 30 to 35 but the waste activity what we are doing is waste uh, uh, with respect to material time and all 55 to 65% so some of them if it is material waste and all we can see them but uh, majority of them are with respect to time waste which we cannot see and this majority is happening due to improper planning and also there is no proper communication with the people and all next slide please so the solution to many of these above discussed problem with respect to our time overrun cost overrun including the wastage we are finding the lean construction is giving a solution to that how and all we are going to see now the next slide please the definition for the lean given is the in the manufacturing industry lean or uh, the lean production they simply call it as a lean it is a systematic method for elimination of waste whatever the manufacturing or production system is there they will do a systematic method of elimination of waste here the waste means which will not add any value so we have to identify what are the things which will not add any value so it will be involving the production process with the minimum cost and maximum value by considering the customer need so we have to first understand what is the need of the customer then we have to understand how to improve the process by which we will be minimizing the cost and by also maximizing the value in lean construction we are combining the operational research and the practical development in design and construction with adoption of this lean manufacturing principles and practices that start from the beginning conceiving the project that is end to end design and construction process not only during execution we have to do many of the things at the time of designing or at the time of uh, developmental things by which we can understand what are the things are required on the latter part by which we will be in a position to eliminate whatever the things that is not required next slide please coming to the history of lean early 
Henry Ford started his crop production from crop production to mass production, where he introduced in 1910 the line production and all. So later on, when the Toyota started for product car from that uh, automobile production, they want to compete with Henry Ford. Then they started probing what are the things they can do by which they can get into the market. So Taiji Ohana and uh, and his uh, group of people, they started working on this Toyota production system. This Toyota production system, major, it started concentrating on what customer need. In fact, Henry Ford, they were delivering Ford, they were delivering only the black cars. So there is no other choice and all. But uh, Toyota started understanding what uh, the customer need, right from the color to various facilities. They started manufacturing according to the customer need. Then this Toyota production system, including the just-in-time thing and all, it started, uh, people from the Western world also started uh, making it from Japan. So they have, there are two books written by James Womack and Daniel Jones. One is The Machine That Changed the World. Second one is Lean Thinking. So this Toyota production system started evolving as a lean thinking and it started creating revolutions in the automobile industry. And uh, subsequently, this started penetrating the aerospace industry and uh, seeing that people started using it in the other industry, including our construction industry. So this lean management started somewhere in 1990. So what we are seeing from craft production to mass production that and all went for the production improvement system, this Toyota production after this uh, Toyota, uh, this uh, lean thing, it started penetrating as a lean management in the management system. Earlier it was with the production system, from production system, it went into the management system. People started from lean manufacturing to lean thinking, and they started adopting it in various industry. So now government, uh, even the many of the public sectors also, they started working on this lean construction. Next slide, please. Now we can see how lean is working. How do lean work? First, uh, we have to observe what are the mistakes are happening, where the waste is happening, and we have to reduce the waste. In fact, we have to eliminate the waste. For that, uh, they are seeing what are the value-added activity, what are the non-value-added essential activity, what are the non-value-added non-essential activity. So everywhere, they identify that non-value added and non-essential activity as the waste because it is not going to add any value and it, it is not going to support the value addition activity also. Once they identify it, there should be a constant process improvement. Every time in the process, we have to verify what are the uh, non-value added activities are happening. So we can go on, eliminate those non-value added activities by which we can continuously improve the process. And the most important thing is there are many players are there. So we have to involve all the people for which we have to create a trust. So we have to build a trust. So not only with the customer, our own uh, people working along with us are the uh, associates whomever is there. So we have to involve all the people. So there should be a trust building among the uh, various stakeholders. So that by doing this thing, we can increase the value because we are going to eliminate the waste and also we are going to improve the process that will for sure it will be increasing the value. So now the productivity improvement, it will be starting with the lean. Here what we are seeing, some of the um, waste, what we are, uh, they have identified one is overproduction. At the, what is required more than that you produce, that will become waste. At our construction site, we can see people will be going on bending some bar bending, uh, the stirrups and all. They don't know how much is required. They will be going on bending it. So many sites you can see, many of the unnecessarily bent rods will be there. And another most important factor is your delays. Because people, for want of uh, various uh, details or lack of people or want of machinery, want of material. Many times the delays will be happening. So you can see, we can see at many of the sites, construction project sites, 
the inordinate delays will be happening for want of many details unless until there is a meticulous planning this uh, delays cannot be avoided and uh, it will majority of the time related delays we cannot uh, even see that so simply people will look like they are engaged in the work but the output will not come so ultimately we are seeing there will be wastage occurring there other side excess transport whatever is material required more than that if the material is transported or unnecessarily it is transported from one place to another place all those things and they are accounting under the excess transport uh, the thing what we are seeing in majority of the site is the excess motion that is people required where they required to work without knowing that they will be moving from different places unless until specifically it is told exactly where the particular period of work is going to happen people will be moving uh, needlessly and the majority of the time they will move from one place to another place that time the productivity will be going down another one what we are seeing is the over processing whatever is required we have to do some of the time what we will be seeing even the removal of farm work or otherwise uh, some of the curing thing and all without knowing for how many days they have to do they will be going on doing it so that and all will undergo the over processing so they should know exactly according to the quality plan how much things have to be done so we have to control those things and another important thing is your inventory so people especially your uh, steel rods and all they will not calculate they will not do proper bar bending schedule and all just uh, they will roughly calculate and uh, they will take some inventory later on you can see and necessary inventory will be piling up so that and all also you can see not only with the steel pipes many other items so you can see those things and another one thing what we are seeing is the rework or correction here again without a proper instruction people will assume something they will start doing it later on they come to know that whatever they have done is wrong then that work needed to be demolished and the rework has to be carried out that way lot of waste will be happening at the site these are the construction waste we are seeing at the site if we are in the position to control these ways we can eliminate uh, that means we can save lot of money go to the next slide so here what is the pathway of lean first one it advocate for what is the value versus waste here value means what customer want to get so we have to be very clear with uh, what is the requirement of the customer based upon that all the things will be it has to be focused to that the second one they call it as a value stream the value stream start from the raw material to the finish the wood what are the various level the process improvements are going to happen that will be coming under the value stream then the next one will be flow here what they are seeing is from between the process whatever the improvements will be happening that will be accounted in the flow then pull is the downstream customer what he want is to be delivered by the upstream customer but normally what we are seeing in construction and many other places we are seeing the push that means the top from the top level things will be pushed to the bottom level so the bottom level may not be prepared for that so it will be kept idle or it people are not prepared for that so they will be doing something wrong and all so the pull it has to be made by the top level people so okay that time that the bottom level people they have to signal the top level people by which the top level people will the uh, will be sending according to the requirement of the bottom level people so this all continuously we have to do it so the last one is pursue perfection wherein we will be striving for it again and again by which ultimately we will be in a position to achieve a better productivity next slide please yeah now whatever we have discussed in the lean thinking what we are seeing first we have to identify value here what customer is ready to pay for so we have to get the clarity from the customer in fact mahatma gandhi used to tell that the customer is the king so the customer is the god so now earlier the days have gone whatever they will make and give people will accept it now people have to interact with the customer understand what exactly customer want then the flow of goods it will identify what are the 
value added process and what are the non value added again what are the non value added non essential and all so in the value stream we have to map from raw material to finished good identify what are the wasteful that is non value added non essential activities and all and also to work on progress we, for a smooth production we should create the flow any obstacles are there that is to be removed so every site we can see there are lot of constraints will be there first of all we have to understand what to identify what are the constraints and we have to assign to the people by which we will create a, a smooth flow by which the work will the progress of the work will not get affected then the next one is you are establishing pool the for that we have to get from the downstream what is the requirement or need so most of the time we can adopt what is just in time instead of poor production or we will be supplying more and all this all whatever we are doing again we have to see that there should be a continuous improvement it is not a one shot treatment it requires a multiple thing they require to be a continuous improvement next slide please there are multiple lean tools are there okay so uh, more than 40 41 lean tools are there but um, the at, at site uh, we can very well use uh, the majority of the site uh, we have done lot of study the majority what they are using is 5 years and also last planner of course other than that there are many other things are there kanban like that many other tools are there so we are going to see two of the tool even just in time and all here the next what is a mainly adopted tool is the last planner system as i already told the many of the problem is due to the planning issue so here last planner what they try to advocate is involve the last person in the stream to involve in the planning so the entire planning is divided into first of master schedule from that they have to prepare a phase schedule that again depending upon the milestones they will be working out backward to get a reverse phase schedule by which they know what are the activities they have to do by which they will be in a position to release the milestone and all then they will be preparing a six week look ahead plan okay here they will identify what are the constraint and they will be removing all the constraint by which uh, the look ahead plan will be without any constraint from the look ahead plan they will be making weekly work plan so here again they will identify any bottlenecks are there any block that backlog is there that will be immediately updated daily by which uh, there will be a dynamic uh, project scheduling will be happening so here they will be measuring two things one is planned personnel completion that what they call it as a ppc another one is whatever the variance is happening so they are trying to control these two things by which uh, they can achieve 100% by which uh, your productivity you can get whatever the required thing and the parallelly you can reduce the waste because you can control both your time and the cost line in the last planner system it is developed by bellard and uh, many of the software now with the digital things they are working with this last planner okay the next slide please the next most simple and adopt easy adoptable at the site is your 5s method here five years method it is a well organized workplace here completely with some visual control and order here they are mainly emphasizing for a place everything and everything in place that they will be ensuring it and uh, that is that will be a clean and uh, uh, there will be uncluttered safe and organized that means the site is put with a proper uh, that uh, almost daily they have to clean the site by which uh, there will not be any safety issue or anything and also we have to see ultimately that uh, site will be speaking okay that will be linking people process product everything so ultimately we can see whatever the required thing we can get it this is from the five japanese word first one is seiri that is sorting out the things we have to sort out and remove what is not required so majority of the site we will be seeing so many things that will be lying which are not required and all the second one is known as site on or otherwise set it in order we have to organize the thing with a proper place and all 
okay which is first row required that should be kept in the front and the which is rarely required will be either kept on top or bottom or something like that in the racks and all and also we have to put the proper tag and all, uh, by which people will be easily identify and take the things the third most important thing is your shine that is nothing but regularly cleaning and organizing the work area of course it will maybe involving little bit cost but it will save lot of money okay so they have to periodically clear every unwanted things and all keep the workplace very neat and clean okay so that uh, that is also known as iso that is uh, the shining or cleaning the place and all the next one is your psychetsu or otherwise standardize whatever we are in a position to identify a rhythmic one we can go for standardizing thing to make a, any problem is there it will be immediately visible so many of the time we are going to put the standard operating procedure or we will be keeping a flow of the things by which something goes wrong people will be in a position to identify things are not in order so the next one is your sit suke that is nothing but sustaining whatever the four thing we have made it it should sustain for the gain to prevent the backsliding if you are not going to sustain it things will get distorted even whatever the things are there every time you have to check and you have to see that will be getting sustained next slide please so we have done a a uh, case study that means uh, our children they have done an experiment they went and uh, studied the site it is the ramke one north it is a premium residential project it happened in uh, avalahal village in north bangalore the project consists of some uh, two bedroom three bedroom uh, uh, 2 bhk 3 bhk apartment there is a common uh, your basement and all and there are five towers five blocks and also it was having a beautiful clubhouse and all those things but the site initially they went they have seen lot of wastage was there that I mean it was very much unorganized and many of the things are there, not there then our student initially went and measured the things and later on they emphasized for 5 years and just in time next slide please we can see what are the things are there and what are the improvements are there before going further for quantification of material waste there are some formulas available in the literature review material scrap waste information is obtained from reconciliation of data and other documents maintained by the planning engineers or at the site engineers here the there are two formulas it is used one is material scrap waste wi that should be expressed in a percentage that is nothing but whatever the material actually required to use minus material actually m actually used minus m theoretically required to be used divided by m theoretically required to be used that m theoretical thing we can see from some data books and all so m actual we can get from the site uh, material at site register what are the materials actually used and all if it is multiplied with the 100 we can get the percentage then the cost of material scrap waste equal to it is nothing but it uh, you are multiple materials are there so the multiple materials that may be i equal to 0 to n the formula is wi into ti into ci divided by 100 here wi what we have calculated that material scrap waste just before and the ci is the unit price of the material for every material there will be a unit price of that material then i is the number of materials for which data collected various materials as i already told that for which you are going to collect the data m actually is the actual quantity of material consumed as i already told this you can get from your dpr daily progress report or otherwise from the material at the site register how much materials got consumed and the m theoretical that is theoretical quantity of material consumed from the data book you can get to know what is the theoretical consumption of materials whereas ti is the total quantity of material required for the entire project and the wi is the of course we have calculated from the earlier formula i think it is a very simple one so we can calculate the wi that is uh, m actual minus m theoretical divided by theoretical and we can calculate the cost of the scrap waste total for various material by using this formula next slide please so 
somewhere in the June, they calculated for the uh, before application of the lean tools, they calculated from the reconciliation statement and uh, for four materials, cement, steel, river sand, and EM sand. So they come to know what are the various actual consumption of quantities. And they calculated what is the theoretical concern of consumption of the quality. These all will be available in your reconciliation statement. Then they calculated what is the difference and uh, what is the difference in percentage. And whatever the difference quality by multiplying with that average rate, they got what is the excess wastage amount and what is the total excess wastage amount also. So this is the total excess wastage amount it is coming because it is the difference between your theoretical consumption and the actual consumption. You can see everywhere there is some difference. Even the percentage is also given how much difference is happening there. After adopting that five years and just in time, the next slide please. You can see in the next table here, they have done, taken the detail after ad adopting the uh, five years and uh, just in time. Here, what are, what are the things you are seeing? You are seeing is there is a difference. Now you can see it is compared to the other one. It is coming down and also the calculator. What is the cost? Of course, there is a slight difference in the uh, uh, price, but the, when they calculated what is the waste cost, it is coming to 47 lakh, uh, 45 lakh, 17,699. That means a saving, it was coming nearly 48,50,000. Next slide, please. So now you can see what is the difference between the percentage of waste. It was there before introduction of this uh, lean tool, the five years and just in time. So what is the percentage that improved after implementation of the thing? So ultimately what we are seeing here is cement, it has reduced by 47%. So from then what we are seeing in steel, of course, still they're having a thorough control. Still they got a 18% reduction, but this is a reasonably good control only, but still they got a very good reduction. The river sand, they were not at all bothering. After this thing, they started making it properly. They almost saw there is a 90% reduction because, because there was no, uh, that means they were not at all bothering about it. Then they start because they will be mixing with uh, earth and all, all this river sand and all. Then they, they made a proper barricading it and without mixing with the earth and all, they have done some exercise. Similarly, for M sand also, they have seen a 72% reduction. So we can see by implementing five years and just in time these things, easily we can control whatever the wastage of material to a reasonable level. Still, there are chances. If we are going to continue with that, there may be chances of further reducing the wastage of cement and also some more control on the M sand and all those things. Possibilities are there. So now we can understand by implementing this lean tool, for sure we will be getting the savings. So normally what is happening? Hardly 10% uh, profit only companies are getting. But whereas the wastage you are seeing, it is much more than 27% and all. So even you save a 5% in a big project, enormous amount can be saved. So now you can understand prima facie how this lean will be helping to minimize the waste. Next slide, please. Coming to the digital side, construction four, it is a variety of interdisciplinary technologies wherein we are going to use that digitization, automation, and integrate the construction process, all the stages of the value chain, right from the your, um, beginning of the project, then later on during the design stage, later on during your uh, contract tendering stage, execution stage, later on maintenance stage, all stages, various tools and technologies are used. So how this fundamental philosophy of construction four, this is developed from the industry four. So industry four, they started using various technological development, the same way construction industry also, but little late, but nowadays they have started introducing many things. Next slide, please. You can see at the design and the documentation period, then construction and execution period, later on, your operation and maintenance period, including the your innovation and the demolition period. 
Nowadays, they are using the collecting the data and they are processing the data through the artificial intelligence as well as the machine learning that is adopted in all these levels. Again, you are seeing that the data layer here it is a design model uh, criteria. They, they are creating it and based upon that, they are adopting, doing the improvements and all. Even building information modeling also used in the design and document, documentation process itself. Of course, during the construction and execution, again, they are using the uh, whatever the uh, BIM implementable things they are trying to do. And also they are using the your cloud-based cloud whatever the data environment they create and many people they can interact. Earlier, at site, they may require computer and all. Now they don't require even with a mobile phone, they are in a position to connect with the cloud-based things. Things are working. And also they are doing with the cloud-based project management. And also they are using operational maintenance speed period that the digital twin and all so now again there are various uh, equipments also used now you can see the drone that they are using it for radar okay so similarly they are using this building information modeling where they are they are adopting virtual reality augmented reality they are mixed reality and all those things like many of the things they are using it by which ultimately they are in a position to control many things okay including uh, some of the prefabrication or if even some of the automatic automotive manufacturing and all those things. So what uh, we can see, of course, due to the time constraint, I'm just nutshell, I want to tell you, by using this technology, we will be in a position to plan the things meticulously and also monitoring and control also, we can do it very meticulously and also on properly, by which we will be in a position to minimize whatever the non-value or non-essential activity which are waste ultimately we will be in a position to control the waste and improve the productivity and all so we can, we are seeing this technological development whatever the ideology or the philosophy of the lead that is helping them to mix it and they can work in a better manner next slide please here we are seeing how the building information modeling is helpful so what we are going to see is initially there will be a 3D model will be made wherein all the people, they will be putting their thing collaboratively, people will be joining by which uh, everybody will put all their uh, requirement and all. They can see whatever the concept, the clash deduction and all they can minimize. Subsequently in the 4D, they are bringing the time element into it. So various point of time, how that uh, project is going to come up that they can visualize in the 4D. That will be helpful, uh, helping them to move, go for a meticulous planning and all those things. And also they will be doing better proactively. They will get to know what other things are going to happen. And all. When they are going to link the cost element in the 4D, that will be coming your 5D. Here, we can take up the quantities within no time. And also we will be in a position to control the cost. Okay, we can plan how the cost control will be there and also we can minimize whatever the unwanted thing and also we can track how the very due to changing variables what are the things are happening and what are the dynamic uh, control how we can make even the records we can create and all. so here we can quickly do the things whatever the things are required with the 5d your 6d there they are going for sustainability where they are trying to go for a detailed energy analysis and also they will be conceptual energy analysis they will be making it by which uh, they are in a position to control whatever the expenditures that is going to happen for operation maintenance and all. So they will be linking the leader tracking and all those things. The next level they are going for the facility management wherein they find from the operational maintenance data what are the things are happening how they can make a maintenance schedule also and go for a preventive maintenance by which they need not uh, shut down the things or they need not uh, break the services and all those things. This model will tell what are the required things and all by which they can plan and uh, utilize whatever the things are uh, required for them. So now what we are seeing this building information modeling by incorporating building information modeling with uh, the lean principle, we are in a position to technologically control the thing and take the advantage of the things. Next slide, please. So for this, what are the things are happening? Various uh, places, various things are happening, uh, promoting this uh, lean knowledge. Even we are going to conduct a lean construction conference 
the coming uh, next month, 13th December, we are having a workshop day where we are going to talk about uh, BIM and uh, Lean combination as well as virtual reality, augmented reality, and that combination, even the people behavior, why they are resisting it, how to purchase the people to involve. So involve the people, that and all we are going to discuss. Then the industry day, people from industry, they are going to come and speak about how they have implemented, what is the advantage they got. And today's conference, we are having numerous research papers they are going to submit. Even from the industry, we have asked the papers. They are submitting the industry side also. And also we are going to conduct a site visit where the lean is implemented. The details are available. So in the website, it is given here, conference.nikma.ac.85. Um, uh, so slash, if you go here, you will get the details. The registrations are going already. So here we can, we are going to integrate the people. So by which uh, there will be people will understand what are the things are happening on that. Next slide. Yeah, so we are here, we are just before finishing, just I want to put a word, whatever, just go to the earlier slide. Please. So here, whatever the things are there, so you can understand how you are going to control the waste. For that, planning is the major tool and uh, lean people should think from the lean aspect. What are the lean thinking and all? Also, there should be a cultural shift. People should accept and they have to participate and all. Okay, with this thing, I am closing here. Any question is there, you can ask or otherwise at the end, I'm reserving it for uh, answering your questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, RV, sir. Uh, really appreciate you joining in today and giving us your valuable experience uh, and your thought and knowledge over here. So uh, in interest of time, I'll keep my part short so that we can take some questions which are there on the okay. uh, So uh, uh, Riddhi, I'm just sharing my screen. <clears throat> Please, ready, please confirm it visible. Yes, sir. Perfect. Visible. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next. So, uh, so, so something of what you mentioned is probably the need of the R today in terms of lean and BIM and other technologies that we are talking about. And uh, especially when we talk about sustainability, like thinking about our kids, what is going to happen to them in the future. So sustainability is something which we think is is going to be derived from lean kind of practices in the construction industry. So construction is one of the industries which uh, probably adds uh, most to the wastages and to the pollution globally uh, uh, today. And how do we together as part of this industry, you, me, and who are all the participants on this call, take the actions which are required today to help us in making this world a better for everyone. So with this as something what you mentioned about BIM, so what I would like to start with, that is what we do uh, as BIM as a technology, so, but before that, we wanted to highlight some uh, overview about what is happening in the industry today. So, so you mentioned a lot of things about uh, uh, like how the wastages are coming, but we also believe that it is a people-led wastages. So there are so many stakeholders and which are involved in any construction project, be small, large, infrastructure, building, water, whatever. And each in, within firms, in particular firms, there are so many tools which they're using. The challenge is that all these tools, they don't talk to each other. They are not connected to each other, which leads to a lot of time, like a lot of manual work. They've got information missing between different stakeholders. A lot of time when you go on site, you realize the design has already been changed. And then you go back to the drawing board and see, okay, where the changes have been done. So who, where is the latest set of drawings, latest set of models, which is there, which is happening in the world. And then of course, other things, which ultimately leads to a lot of rework and inefficient collaboration between all the stakeholders. Despite having all these technologies in place, especially in Indian context, we have seen that the submissions, the drawings, everything, they still reside much on the hard document side of it, or max in the CAD or uh, non, I would say non-intelligent uh, information uh, segments. What if, uh, so, and the solution for that is like, uh, of course, there are a lot of solutions available in the market, a lot of things which are there in theory right now, for example, big data, connected things like IoTs, augmented reality, virtual modeling, blockchain, 
uh, then a lot of things. And uh, I mean, you open up, you do a Google search of how what is digitization in uh, in in the world uh, in the construction industry nowadays. You would probably find thousands and thousands of articles of what you can do. But something what uh, Dr. Arvi shared earlier that uh, I want to go back to is on this slide. So, which is talks about how different technologies can be used across different uh, project stages. And one thing interesting was over here that ultimately it boils down to the data layer and the data processing. Well, everything else is connected and absorbing the data or sending data back to these two layers. And the foundation for that is, of course, the design model or the whatever the one, two, three, BIM, whatever BIM it is. So this is where it's more to do with garbage in, garbage out. So uh, how do we control what's the right information, right data, which is being created from the design or even, for example, at the concept or the planning stage, which helps me downstream to in, during the construction operations and then the whatever stage of the project it is. Now coming back uh, more around, so the idea here is that as a BIM, like what if I can have a central data source? So how can I have, so there's millions of uh, data points in any project which are right now disconnected to each other. How do I have all that information, including design, non-design, all in, associated on a one single piece of uh, uh, model data? What if uh, all the stakeholders who are involved in my project, instead of communicating with each other in mul multiple permutation combinations, are able to communicate using a single point of reference. They have a single source of truth and everyone is on the same page at the same time. What if uh, now because digital has made it sort of geography not so important for the consultants and the stakeholders, apart from that, the concession goes on the side. Uh, how do I make sure that all these geographically dis displaced stakeholders are connected to each other at the same time? So that is where the BIM comes into picture. Now, that was more around the BIM. Now, how do I connect BIM and Lean. So Dr. RV, one of the experts on Lean, so he said, what are the benefits of Lean, but how do I connect it to BIM? So BIM is just not what, and this is what we think, it's not just any tool which you can buy off the shelf. It is just not something which you can buy from online store and say, okay, now I have a BIM, I have a software. It's more to do with your thinking as an individual, as an organization, or for example, larger at the project level, at a, at a, even at a national level, what is BIM? It's very important for everyone to understand and then implement it in their organizations. And then what we believe BIM and Lean together can lead to multitudes of uh, uh, savings for the entire uh, project, be it time, cost, sustainability, whatever you name it, it, it's going to be there. So just more on the uh, connecting more towards Lean and BIM, so some of the benefits of lean are there on the left. Like how do I increase production flexibility? How do I increase process transparency? How do I control the process? How do I reduce variability? How do I have, how do I avoid design mistakes? This is what BIM enables you to do to achieve your lean goals. And we believe that BIM is something which could be a starting point for you to uh, achieve lean. So I'm saying the word lean again and again, when I um, uh, when I was studying construction management, say about ten years back, at that time, just when it started, lean used to be like, okay, probably the structure is going to be thinner, probably the column beam sizes are going to be thinner than the normal sizes. But lean is much more than that. It's simply not about uh, like saving uh, material, even saving product people time, uh, pa saving on paper which is used in the construction process, <laughs> saving time. Uh, which is uh, used which is used during the process not only the construction process but what about uh, the time used to make a drawing to deliver a drawing by a design consultant if that can be increased that is leading to a lean practice so it's so lean has lean is about just saving uh, anything during the construction process I would, that's what i believe that if you save time cost money uh, uh, even some a lot of intangible benefits in lean but yes whatever you're saving that leads to uh, lean in your projects. And <clears throat> lastly that, uh, so uh, one, uh, one, one of the other things about lean and uh, BIM 
why we are connecting the both of them is that so this is a very famous McLeany curve which talks about uh, let me just zoom this in so which talks about like as my construction pro project progresses what is going to be the impact of my design change or what is going to be the cost of my design change so if we talk about a traditional workflow a uh, traditional design workflow which is shown in black you can see that uh, in that the changes which happens in the construction progress happens only more, mostly during the construction documentation phase this is when the contractor is onboarded and, and he is trying to figure out the ways of constructing the designed element and then you realize okay there are a lot of changes to be made but if you can pull this graph towards back which by uh, by in incorporating more of bim practices more of ibd practices you can reduce the cost of design changes dramatically so if you can do all the changes you can incorporate uh, uh, you can incorporate uh, maximum amount of design inputs from all these stakeholders even during the schematic or dd stage then you are able to save dramatically during the entire life cycle of the project and then there were of course some studies done uh, regarding like what are the prob general problems in the construction uh, construction and how uh, lean and bim can help them together so i'm not going into much details over here but the idea over here is that uh, bim is very closely linked with uh, helping you achieve your lean goals on your project so if i put it more into numerical sense and this have been uh, as per our almost 10 15 years of experience uh, working on bim uh, in the industry so we have observed that uh, just by implementing BIM on your projects, you can reduce rework by 36%. You can reduce construction cost by 30%. But again, here we are talking about BIM as a process and not just as a tool. So this is a very important differentiator uh, that we would like to make out that if BIM is implemented properly in your projects, it can lead to substantial savings for you across your project life cycle. So uh, with this, uh, we would like to open up the floor for question and answers. Uh, uh, sorry for uh, overshooting the time. And uh, we have one question. Uh, we actually one had one uh, uh, query in the box. <clears throat> so it was around. Uh, so uh, uh, also, Arvi said, I would like your inputs on this. Yeah. So uh, the question was a difference between uh, more on digitization versus digitalization. So, uh, because digitization, a lot of people believe is more around uh, converting of uh, paper form to digital form. And digitalization is more around uh, conversion of the complete processes which are there. Correct. So, any inputs on that, sir? Even in lean, uh, like uh, NPS or any of those technologies. Yeah, by uh, as you already told, uh, there are many tools are available. The main yes, thing is how we effectively you are going to use that tool. For that again, you should know the lean principle which advocate uh, non-value added, non-essential. Even the tool also we can understand which are the tools which is not going to add any value where we need not to use the tools and that. Okay, that okay. way. Even in the digitization also or digitalization also, both the places you can understand what is this philosophy says, and that really will help you. Even okay. for the matter of fact, BIM again, it is not software. How you are going to apply those tools? Okay, even you create a model, how you are going to use that model? So that way, it uh, much more goes towards uh, provocating your thoughts. In, that means you have to put your thoughts in a proactive manner rather than acting as a reactive. Let it happen, then I will find a solution. So we have to uh, identify the problems much ahead before it is happening by using all these tools. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, so, and uh, you have also already answered the second question which, which was out there. So what exactly differentiates BIM as a process and BIM as a tool? So, uh, so I would like to take that question up. Uh, so one of the big, biggest misconceptions in the market is that when I talk about BIM as a tool, so there are a lot of BIM softwares available in the market. And people believe that just by buying the software, they are BIM enabled. 
but that is not the case. Yeah. Uh, just by buying, so for just for example, I think Revit or AutoCAD or for example any other software like Tecla, whatever. Uh, you might say that okay, I'm delivering the project on them. But when you work on a multi-stakeholder environment, large projects like metro, airports, the tools will not help you anyway. I mean, they are part of it, but uh, just buying it will not help you. Uh, you need to have proper setups, processes set up before you can start using those tools. You need to have a collaborative environment set up. You need a common data environment. You need to make sure that all the stakeholders understand uh, what is going to be the uh, what is going to outcomes that you're going to get by implementing them. Very so something very simple as, for example, having a common file convention, file naming convention, having a common uh, process flow uh, between all the stakeholders, and where the documents are going to go, models are going to go, who is who has the master access control, who is going to change a particular flow. So all that is the uh, 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 part of it. Ah. Yeah. I agree with that. In fact, uh, it is uh, three things we have to understand, which is also uh, much emphasized in Lean is people, process, then technology. Without a uh, proper understanding of the uh, uh, tool, there is no use of it. So how we are going to use it, that is very, very important for which we have to understand first the process. What are the things, how to do it and all. Then only if you are going to use the tool, it is going to give the benefit. Other than the, without understanding the process, the tool is not going to help. Even the people involvement also very much essential. Whatever the technology we are going to use, uh, that should be required to improve the process by the people. So the people involvement plays a very critical role. Absolutely, sir. Uh, so, Mr. Abdul, I have taken out, uh, taken that uh, into consideration. Yes, uh, I, I think it's a mistake from our side. Uh, we'll make sure it does not repeat it. Yeah, I think it, it should be digital digitalization and not digitization. Let me just check some. Any other questions are there? So uh, there any are no other... further no further questions are there right now, sir. Uh, any but uh, yes, so you you can reach out to directly to either me or Dr. Arvi for any questions around our respective areas. So Dr. Sir, uh, Dr. Sir is on expert on construction and lean anything anything related to that. Please feel free to reach out to him. Uh, post this. Uh, I'll ask my team members to share his email ID with uh, all the attendees. And uh, if anything related to BEM or technology, that please reach out to us. Uh, we will be more than happy to help you on yeah. it out. Before concluding, just I want to tell a few words. Actually, we are also in the process of learning. We, whatever experience we had, now again, what is the new things are coming, how the new things will be giving impact and all those things. The better way of learning is by uh, teaching or by uh, interaction and all. So I request all the uh, our participants Come forward, take participate in some of the, uh, uh, what you can say, even the conferences or some of the workshops or whatever may be. Which one, Lean, uh, ILCC we are conducting, similar things will be there. You can start uh, spreading it. So you are the first person who, who will be listening it and you will be spreading it. Interestingly for me, it has started my journey. I started with uh, one workshop only, Lean workshop only. In fact, I have not studied lean in IIT. I attended one workshop there in IIT, but it has given a light that really this is going to give a lot of impact. It is giving a lot of impact on that. So please take part, whatever the things are there, and you can be in a position to take it to the next level. As already our friend told her, that lean not only minimize saving the cost and all, other side it is protecting the environment also. Because uh, we are abusing the environment by sand mining, by manufacture of cement or steel or anything, we are emitting a lot of carbon. So if we are going to minimize the waste, means uh, more than the cost, we are going to protect the environment also. So I request all of you, please uh, take part and uh, uh, try to spread this. Okay. Thank you very much for the patient listening. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for your time, sir, today. Really appreciate it. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Okay, thank you.